ITR Boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. Talk about this training camp. How's it different? It, um, it's different since first six rounder, man. Obviously, we got to go a little harder. He's fatigued today. We did like 11 straight rounds with three fresh bodies. So he's been doing that. And this is new for his camp, like sparring three different people at one time. It's the first time we've done that. How is it um, like transitioning from the amateurs to the pros and just learning the business side along with the pro game? And then to be able to do like the four rounders and now train for the six rounders. How is this process? I mean, it's cool, man. You just got to be constantly learn. You know, you got to learn from your mistakes. Everybody's going to go through trial and error, especially in the sport of boxing. You, you, you got to learn how to, um, how to drive the, the kids, you know, like their bodies. You got to learn everybody's body's different. Some people get, could take more than others and somebody, some people need more rest. So you just got to figure it out, man. Everybody's not the same. That's definitely for sure. In the past year, what's one thing that you've learned from like all that you've gone through and grown from? <laughs> like, this, like I just said, like about the, the, the bodies and like how Gabriel works, like and how, how far to push and how hard not to push. I mean, there's a lot of people even like I, I met, they were like, man, I spar so many times a week and my body's fatigued. I'm not used to this. I said, well, maybe you need to cut it down a little bit and gradually get there. You can gradually get to uh, sparring three times a week if that's what you want to do. That's what we're doing right now, three times a week. But um, obviously, like, it's just a learning process how to, how to um, run your training camps, basically. What about this platform, the ESPN platform? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm always making mistakes, this is little Gabriel's first ESPN performance, right? Right, that's correct. Yeah, man, I mean, I love it, it's great. I mean, you for, uh, what is it, like a million viewers? Over a million viewers sometimes on ESPN, that's awesome, man, so I can't wait, I'm excited for it. Well, I think the beauty of ESPN is not just the viewers, it's like that it's on Sports Center. it's that it's right. relevant. Right, and it's a, like, a, like ESPN, everybody watches ESPN, so you'll get new boxing fans coming in now. Well, we were down in LA, and I remember we were there, and we went out to eat, and it was just on television. Like, right, the boxing right. was just on television, yeah, and yeah. that's something that doesn't usually happen. Right, man, and I think it's a new era for, for boxing, especially, I'm, I'm glad to be with Top Rank and be a part of it, it's awesome. If you had, to, besides your son, if you could name two people that are the future of boxing, who would you name? The future of boxing, I would say Michaela Mayer for sure, man, and women's boxing. I think she's going to do big, big things. Um, who else? I think the kid Carlos Balderas is awesome right now, too. Well, break down why, like, what is so special about Michaela that makes her different than, like, Katie Taylor and all these others? I mean, because she could fight, you know, she's, she's a good looking girl. She could fight. She has personality. She could speak well. She does interviews well. I mean, she, I think she's a full package. So you think that it's not just being able to fight, it's like the Ronda Rousey effect. Right, there you she go. she can carry over yes. into movies. People yep. want to look at her. She's charismatic. Right. She taps into multiple markets. Exactly. Yeah, and she has a great team. Yeah, good managers. So I think she's going to do well. Over and under, by 2020, Michaela's in a movie. I think so. You think she'll be in it? Are you going to make a cameo if it's like Expendables? <laughs> <laughs> Will you try to be in that? Nah, man. I'm man, cool. the helicopter? No, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. What about yeah. Carlos Balderas? I think Carlos Balderas is a um, great talent. And he's really good. And I think he's a. Uh, I mean, I'm not being biased. I just I know the kid. I know his father. That's just that when you ask me the question, that's his first name that popped in my head. He, I, I, I know, obviously, he's going to be a star. Yeah, I mean, his Olympic fight, they really did him dirty. He won the fight, and they didn't give him that fight. And if he hadn't, if he had won that fight, it would say. Olympic medalist Carlos Balderas. Right, right. But I mean, everything happens for a reason. Ever since Carlos was little, I mean, like 13, 14, I looked, I, I, I used to check him out and be like, you're going to be a star. I used to tell him and his father that. And look, at here he is. And I think he's on his way to that. Is there any fight in uh, 2018 so far that you're interested, that you got, you're super excited, you've got it circled? No, not right now, man. I'm just waiting for Crawford and, and, um, and Spence. I'm waiting for that to get done. If that were to happen, you probably got Crawford, right? Um, it's, uh, to me, it's 50-50, man, but I, I would lean towards Crawford experience. I mean, that's the next big super fight in boxing, right? Right, right. Or even Pacquiao Lomachenko, man, they're trying to make that. That'd be a good fight. But I, I think Lomachenko gets him because of his youth, and Pacquiao's on his way out. And we're talking, and I think that's the best fight for boxing, because Lomachenko, if he's going to be the guy, he needs to get the torch. Right, right, for sure. And then I would like to see Valdez maybe against uh, 
a Santa Cruz or even a Gary Russell. That'd be cool. That'd be that'd like be a good. stylistic new. Right, right. Or even a JoJo Diaz. If they could work that out, that'd be a good fight. Well, that'd be a huge fight for LA. Right. JoJo versus Oscar. That's like, what, 20 minutes from each other? Right. But I think Top Rank got some, some big things coming this year, man. They're going to do some um, good fights. So I'm looking forward to it. The thing that's great about Top Rank is they have the ESPN dates, which means they got to do good fights. Exactly, exactly. And nowadays too, man, just because you lose doesn't mean it's the end of your career. They're going more, um, they're more about making great fights now, so that, that's good for boxing also. Yeah, and because then you incentivize people to take good fights because it doesn't kill your career to take right, a big right. fight. As long as you put up a good fight and you're uh, marketable, I mean, they'll still put you on. It's turned into the UFC, not like with the, but like the UFC, you can lose a fight and people still like you. Right, in a good way, yeah, in a positive way for sure it has. Yeah. Not like the pro wrestling. No, 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 man, but I think there's good boxing for 2018, man.